Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. Now we're going to go over the problems that I assigned for you guys for section four, which is the splitting patterns that we discussed. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to try these problems. And before we do that, actually, I want to just get started by a quick review. Because I know that the uh, splitting pattern in general tends to be a little bit confusing when you first learn about it. And so I just want to make sure that we, we got this idea down before we continue. So here's a chart that I put together. And basically what this does is it tells us about the neighbor H's. It tells us about the multiplicity, the N plus 1. So N is the neighbor, N. And here's the plus 1. And then what's the name of it? And then the intensity based on the Pascal triangle that I showed you guys. So let's, let's use an example real quick. And, and I'll do one more um, intensity analysis. So let's say, for example, we have a CH3. We have a CH2. CH2 and a BR. So now if I well actually um yeah that's fine let's do that. So if I look here and for for some reason if I tell you that and I'd have to tell you this but let's say this is A B and C. So if I tell you that J B A is equal to let's say 2 J B C. So that means that the splitting that occurs, and by the way, so what we're doing is we're focusing in on B, right? So B is our focus, and we want to see the splitting pattern that would take place for that. Well, on a chart, we know that we would have three readings, right? So we'd have A, B, and C. So A is furthest from the BR, and C, H is closest to the BR. Now, if I look at A, it's only split by B, right? That's the only distance between them. So for J, this would be J, A, B only. Whereas for C, it would be J, C, B, right? Because C and B are coupled. They're three bonds or less away. And the same thing for A and B. So it's B that actually gets the more uh, complicated pattern. So let's just knock out A for a moment. So for A, what we would say is that we have uh, A's neighbors are B, so it's two H's plus one is three, so that's a triplet, right? So we have two neighbor H's plus one equals three, which is known as a triplet, and so we should have a one to two to one ratio. So if we look at A, it should be one, two times bigger, and then one, one to two to one. Now for C, it's split by B as well, so it's the same thing. Since B has two H's, then it would be, again, a triplet, right? So we'd have a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. So for C, it would be a triplet, 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. So the height of the middle one should be 2 times bigger than the both ends. That's, that's what it means. And now let's deal with B. So that's the one that we're most concerned about. Now, if I tell you this, so this has to be told. Otherwise, you might think J A, uh, JBA and JBC are equal, and then it would just be N plus 1. But if I tell you on your exam that this is how it works out, then that means it's N plus 1 times N plus 1, right? So what we're saying here is that when B comes in, let's say we have JB by itself, it would be just one line if it had no neighbor magnetic fields, right? So remember, the coupling is three, or bo three bonds or less away. And if it is three bonds or less away, then there, the neighbor magnetic fields are going to interfere with the signal. But what we start with is we assume there's no neighbor, and that gives us one line. So that means one message coming out that's not interfered, that's not disrupted. But we know that there are neighbors. So we always take the one that's bigger and we put it on top. So since I'm saying that JBA is two times bigger than JBC, Remember? So the J is the coupling constant. It's the, the distance between those peaks. So this one is two times bigger. So we always start with the bigger one first. And so here we were gonna, what we're going to do next is we're going to refer to JBA since it's two times bigger. And so how I do that is I do my traditional N plus 1. So A has three H's. So plus 1 is 4. This is going to be a quartet. So we know it's going to go and make four messages. It's going to break up our single message into four. So now we're at that level. And now each of these four are going to further break apart by the next neighbor, JBC. Right? So the, the CHs over here are going to break it up. So it's two plus one is three. So the next level is JBC. 
and this is the final level and so we're gonna break every one of these messages into three one two three one two three one two three one two three now I'm assuming something I'm assuming that there's enough gap to fit three into every one above it and that's not always true so if you had graphing paper you could actually really measure out by boxes what this distance would be and how many actually fit and what you'll find is you start overlapping so I'm forcing this to fit I'm, I'm actually cheating right because we don't know it might be that you need three times uh, BC for JBA right so maybe this should have been three times bigger and that would allow all of the signals to split and you could see it at the bottom right so the the thing is that if you don't have graphing paper then it's a little bit more difficult to figure this out because if with graphing paper then you can actually count boxes and make it really uniform and then see how many actually fit and how many cross over so what we're seeing here and let me just make sure this is clear the closer the, di the difference is between J's then the more likely there's going to be overlap and you're not going to see the total number of splits at the bottom so I forced the total so at the bottom we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're going to see a clump that would represent 12 here, right? And that would be a multiplet. So anything that's 5 or greater, we just refer to it as a multiplet, okay? But because, you know, it, it's very hard to see that resolution on your card, uh, on your chart. Sometimes you can see even up to 6, but we would say this is a multiplet. Now the truth is the name of this one, it's important that you know the name. The name is not called a multiplet. Okay, what this would be called is a quartet of triplets. So what we do is we say when you have n plus 1 times n plus 1, right? So it's JBA times JBC to get to 12, right? Because we have 3 plus 1 n 2 plus 1 and that's going to equal 12 so what we would actually see here is a name that represents them individually so at this level it's a quartet and at this level they're triplets and so when you have this multiplication effect we always refer to it at each level as part of its name and we just connect it with the word of so we connect everything together so even if you went five levels down, it would be a something of something of something of something and, and so on. So you just keep using of. So for JB, uh, well I should say for B, this one here is a quartet of triplets. Whereas this is just a triplet because it's not a multiplication effect. It's just one level down. There's only one neighbor. And this one here is also a triplet. Now usually we write T or T or, or M for multiplet. Multiplet would include these other, you know, more fancy names, but you have to know the name in case it came up as a multiple choice question. So you have to understand when to use it. So if it's N plus 1, then you don't use the of. You just call it whatever it is. If it's 6, and it's a sextet or multiplet, um, you know, because usually past 5. But if you want to be specific, it would be a sextet for 6. But if it's, let's say, a triplet and then the next level is a, uh, it brings it to six so then you know so let's say it's like a triplet and then a doublet so three times two is six you wouldn't call it a sextet you'd say it's a triplet of doublets or in this case it's not twelve it's a quartet of triplets you see that so hopefully that's now clear I think it should be now this is a summary of the actual intensity so if you have a quartet it's a one to three to three to one a quintet is a 1 to 4 to 6 to 4 to 1. And remember, all I'm doing is I'm adding up the ones above it, right? So from here, these two represent that. And then these two represent this and then that. And then th these two represent the 4. And then the 6 is by 3 plus 3. And 3 plus 1 is 4. So you just keep working down. And you always add a 1 at both ends. So this is the 5.